Yo, 2014 Nissan Sentra. I'm going to do all the pads and rotors and a brake flush on this. The car is new enough, so I think it's worthy. I don't know why, but somebody overfilled this thing with brake fluid. And it needs brakes, so that kind of defeats the purpose. First thing I'm going to do is get in here with something and fish this filter out of here. I got a little hook tool. Try not to stab the screen. And I got a super duper brake sucky sucker. I'm gonna suck as much of this out as I can. I got a little, really little washer fluid hose I think I can get down in there farther. I think. Well, I didn't get out much, but whatever. I'm going to get all these tires off. They're 21 millimeter. Now I'm going to get as much of this brake fluid out of these calipers as I possibly can. I'm going to start on the right rear. And um, I just got my brake bleeder here because it's, it's nice to have. Uh, an eight millimeter. I'm just gonna crack this open. I don't know, give it about a full revolution. And that's just gonna go down into my brake reservoir. I'm just gonna get a pry bar. You can use a screwdriver. I'm just gonna lightly pull on this. And I can actually see fluid going down the line. I pulled that out as far as I could. I'm just going to get behind the piston and just push it in. It pushes in real easy. I can move this caliper real nice, so that's good. I don't have any caliper slide issues. And I, I went around already and I checked all these rotors and made sure they turned and they're not all sticky and they feel really nice. I'm going to close this bleeder now. I'm going to do that to all four corners. If you ever get all tricky like that, like I do too, when you're pulling in this caliper piston, you want to make sure that you don't touch the rubber boot on the outside of the piston because you don't, you don't want to be tearing that or anything. I did both of the rears. Now I'm on to the right front. This one's a 10 millimeter. Then I'll just do the same to the other side. Now I'm back up here. Can take this cap off. I got a full 32 ounce bottle of brake fluid and I just put it upside down like this to see if it'll work right and it will. I took the cap off it. And I should just be able to leave this sit upside down and it should stay in here without falling out I hope. It looks like it's going to tip over on me. Well, it seemed to fit real nice with the cap on it, so I took the little piece of cardboard out that seals it and drilled some holes in this cap. And that seemed to sit in there really nice now. And it doesn't leak. And I just opened up the rear bleeder screws. I'm going to let these gravity bleed out until that fluid's nice and clean. I'm doing both sides at the same time. And while that's gravity bleeding, I'm going to start doing the front brakes. These calipers slide really nice. The slides are probably lubricated really good. So that's good. Um, these are 14 millimeter. A lot of people like to support these because they're afraid it's going to damage this line. I'm not scared. These two caliper support brackets are 19 millimeter. Then this rotor comes off with a BFH. If it don't come off that easy, just whack it a little harder. Got to make sure this surface is nice and flat and rust free. It's got a little scale on here. It's not too bad though. This side's already nice and clean. For whatever reason, the left rear is pouring out real fast. 
So I'm gonna close this line. Close that line, cap it off, that corner's done. Yeah, this side's got nice clean fluid coming out of it already too. That was quick. Now for these caliper support brackets, it's a good idea to... I'm just gonna look at these pins and make sure that there's no rust on the ceiling surface. And they're lubricated really good still, so... Um, if they were dried up and rusty or something, I'd put some dielectric grease or silicone paste in here and I'd, I'd hit these pins with a wire wheel, but they look really nice and they seal really good. So I'm gonna leave those just the way they are. Sometimes it's best to just leave things be. These brake pads are stuck, so they probably don't work out too good. I got new abutment clips here. You just gotta figure out what side is who. Nice new ceramic pads. These are nice and stuck and that's not good. Get these abutment clips out of here. The reason why they're stuck is because there's a bunch of rust on here. I need to knock all that off. I'm just going to get a chipping hammer after it. Chip all that rusty slag off of there. Then I'm going to hit it with a file until I get down to bare metal again. That should be just fine. These abutment clips almost seem wrong. They're not going in there perfect. They're too big. Yeah, these are a little different. They're a hair wider. Looks like I'm gonna have to use the originals. I'm gonna scrape the slag off of these. There's a little bit of rust hung up on them. I got a little brass brush I'm gonna hit these with. Now this brake pad slides really nice. Now that all that rust is out of there. And this is gonna work just fine. I don't wanna put any lubricant on these abutment clips either. They don't do that from the factory either. Now these tabs right here, them go inside of this little pad just like that. Sometimes it'll push it right out. Once in a while you gotta install these in the car if they're too loose. I just got to be careful with it. They should stay in there, I hope. Well, I got the brake rotors here. There's just a little bit of grease and oil on them. A lot of times I use aerosol glass cleaner. I tried using Windex before. That was, that was a bad idea. But uh, I got some regular brake cleaner. Make sure there's nothing on here. One thing about using a rag, too, you want to make sure that there's no, there's no residue left from the rag on the rotor because all the lint from the rag it can it can it can make these make noise I'm going to carefully put this support bracket on with the pads I'll keep the rotor nice and square so these bolts line up right These things love to pop out so I'm just going to put a clamp on there for right now these caliper support bracket bolts get tightened to 72 foot-pounds. That packet that comes with the box of brakes, the disc brake quiet, that goes on the caliper piston. I actually should have scraped that nice and flat. It's pretty clean though, it looks really nice. I want to put some on this side too. If there's big chunks of rust and material on these, it kind of screws up your pedal feel a little bit. So I'm going to hold on to these pads so they don't fly off. I don't think they will, but whatever. I need to make sure I don't twist up that brake line. These only go on one way. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta turn these pins so they line up right. And these 14 millimeters, they get tightened up 23 foot pounds. 
I just want to make sure this caliper slides really nice. And I want to make sure the pads move too. See how they slide like that? Really good. So I know they're not too tight and nothing's binding up, so that'll that'll give a nice nice pedal feel and a nice smooth disengagement so that the rotors don't get hot. And now I'm just gonna do the same to the other side. While I'm done with this side, I might as well just crack this bleeder. Let this gravity bleed out until I get nice clean clear fluid coming out of it. This corner cleaned up with a quickness too. Now for the rears. These caliper slide pins, they're usually pretty tight. And they're a uh, 14 millimeter. I probably don't even need to take this one off. I can probably just slide it out like this. In fact, I don't think I can slide it out. There's a magical brake line in my way, so I need to leave that on. And these caliper support brackets are 17 millimeter. Same with this rotor, I can just whack it with a hammer to pop this off. And I broke it, yay! I'll have to hit the hat. There it goes. That pad actually came out by hand. Wow, these aren't stuck like the other ones. It's amazing. I wonder if these Jesus clips are the same. Yeah, they look a little different, but I think they're going to work. Same thing here. Clean the crud off of them. That's one thing I don't like. There's a little bit of rust around here. So that's not going to seal these boots really nice. So I'm going to hit this with a wire wheel. I cleaned those up really nice with a wire wheel. So those will seal really good. There's a rubber plug from the old rotor that's got to go in here. That's an inspection cover so you can move the adjuster for the e-brakes if you need to while the rotor's still on it. These caliper support bracket bolts get tightened to 38 foot-pounds, so almost 40. Same thing here, make sure this piston's nice and clean and this mating surface on the other side. Put some silicone paste on this slide pin. I'll put some on the other one too. Might as well clean these holes out a little bit. I'm just using Q-tips. All right, those are lubed really good and clean enough. When you put these in too, you want to make sure this boot goes around the groove in the pin. And these get tightened to 36 foot-pounds. Just like the front, make sure the caliper slides really nice. Make sure the pads move in here really good. I got the tires on it. You torque them to like 83 foot-pounds. And... Um, I've never had a car gravity bleed so fast in my life. It sucked up a 32 ounce bottle in no time. And I'm pretty sure I can just top it off, just fill it all the way to the top. Since I did all four brakes and all of the calipers are unloaded, when I pump the pedal up this level should be right down at the full mark. It should be perfect. So I'm just going to pump the pedal a bunch until it's nice and solid. And then after that, when that, all, when that feels all good, then um, I'm going to bed the pads in. You just do 30 miles an hour and just come to a slow stop a couple of times and then go down the freeway and hit the brakes. And they should be bedded and this should be a brake job. Okay, bye.